So this is trigonometry section 4.1 and 4.2. We're going to talk about the graphs of the sine and cosine function. The first thing to talk about are periodic functions. And a lot of things are periodic. Electricity, the prices of many things like fruit, the temperatures go up and down. Things are periodic. There are a lot of things that can happen like that. There is a definition of a periodic function. F is a periodic function. If f of x is equal to f of x plus np. Now, this just says they're the same at these points, but what is n and p? Well, both x and p are real numbers, and n is an integer. What does that mean for graphs? Well, let's look at a long line here at least. The x-axis and the y-axis. So let's say we're here at the value x, and then there's another point here p units later. So this is x plus 1p, and then p units later, x plus 2p, and keep on doing that. Whatever point is there for f, this is the point x and f of x. That same point is here and here, and it keeps on going forever, both forwards and backwards. That's a periodic function. If uh, we take another x, let's say the one, let's pick this one here, let's make this maybe a square or something. Else. There would be a mirror image, so to speak, right here, right here. It would continue on forever. If you had a point here, then there would be a point here and a point here. It's supposed to be a star. Anyway, it would continue over and over and over. It's periodic. The sine and cosine functions, in fact, all the trig functions, are periodic functions. The smallest value of p is called the period of the function. So, what about the trig functions? Well, the sine and the cosine, you're going to graph these in radian mode. That's important because we're just going to use real numbers, right? Use radian mode, so this will be in radians. Uh, we're going to use some nice numbers here. If you go around the circle, it'll make more sense, perhaps. Because this, I think, makes sense. we got a point for the sine. This is the point one zero for on the unit circle. This is the point zero one. Here's the point negative one zero and here's the point zero negative one this is for zero radians this is for pi over two or 90 degrees this is for pi this is for three pi over two and then we get back around to two pi so at zero we are at zero because for the sine it's just the y with the unit circle equal one and at pi over two we are 
right, one. Let's make this one up here. At pi, that's two pi over twos. Y is back down to zero. At three pi over twos, we get to a negative one. And boy, I just made this fit from two pi. We're back at zero. And in between all of this are all these points here. And this is the piece that uh, we usually recognize as the sine function. But you've got to recognize it doesn't stop at 2 pi. It doesn't really start at 0. These go forwards and backwards with this. One of the easier ways to look at that is by using your calculator. Making sure you're in radian mode. Going to y equals and put in the sine of x. Making sure these plots are all turned off. If you need to, you go up there and press enter. That highlights it. Or go up there and press enter to unhighlight it. We'll make sure it's off. There's a quick way to get to a nice trig screen zoom number seven and this puts it in negative two pi to two pi and negative four to four so i'm going to change this window because negative four to four to me is too much so i'm going to do negative two to two that's what the graph then it just looks a little taller Instead of negative 4 to 4, it's negative 2 to 2. A little nicer look. And for what we've grown, drawn here, really one way to look at this thing is, you know what? Let's go from negative 20 to 20 for the x. And what you see is this periodic function just goes on forever both directions. What we're going to zoom into is this first period because it seems that at zero, now it gets back to zero after pi units, but it's not doing the same thing. It's on its way down instead of being on its way up. So you need all the way to two pi. So let's make our window go from zero to two pi. And then when we graph it, we see essentially what we've drawn here. From a negative 1 to 1 and 0 to 2 pi, that is what we think of as the sine function. It does continue to infinity both directions. We can't use this 0, which does repeat that 0, but if we go up here, we've got to then make sure that we're further along. We'd have to be someplace up here for that to repeat, but it doesn't. The next repetition is really all over here once it starts again after 2 pi. So, the sine function. Now, what about the cosine function? Where we're going to use something similar, the same circle, the cosine of x, and this was just x here on this horizontal axis. At 0, we are looking at 1, the x value. So at 0, we're at 1. At pi over 2, the x value is 0. At pi... The x value is a negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, the x value is 0. And at 2 pi, we're back to 1. 
So this looks something like this. This is what we think of as the cosine curve. Once again, it goes on forever and ever. Let's bring back our calculator and go into y equals and make y2 the cosine of x. Close the parentheses. You can turn on and off these graphs by going to the equal sign, pressing enter, and it will either highlight or unhighlight. And if you unhighlight it, it won't graph it. So if we graph this in the same window from 0 to 2 pi, that's what the window is here, 0 to 2 pi. We've got marks at pi over 2s. When we graph this, we get our picture of this cereal bowl, I like to call it. Now, you might say, gosh, okay, that's really different. It's really not different. If we go from like a negative 20 to 20 again, our graph reminds us of the sign. So, oh boy. If that's like the sign, what has happened? Well, we've moved pi over 2 units. If we can look at just this negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, that's what looks like the sine curve. But when we go back to our 0 to 2 pi, and graph it, we don't really see this part over here that would have been part of the sine curve. It's sort of moved to the left. It's been shifted over. But these are the two sine and cosine curves. And what we need to do is look at um, how these are affected. First of all, what is the domain? For both of these. Well, if we do it in interval notation, because it's a little easier, it goes from a negative infinity to a positive infinity. All the real numbers. What is the range of both of these? Well, the lowest it goes and includes is a negative 1. That's why I use the square bracket. And it goes up as high as a positive 1 and includes it. But that's as high as it goes. The period for both of these functions, when does it start repeating? The period, that's an i, is 2 pi. Around the circle once. Now, there's where things change a little bit. What are the x-intercepts here? These are the points. Um, it's really a set, so I'm going to write this in interval notation, the set of all x, because that's what I'm talking about, x-intercepts. Now you can start with zero, that's okay I guess, but every time you go pi units, you're going to hit another zero, so we'll call it n pi, where n is an element of the integers. So every pi, zero pi, one pi, two pi, negative one pi, negative two pi. What are the y-intercepts? just the point, zero, zero. Right? How about the x-intercepts for the cosine? Once again, in interval notation, the set of all x such that, well, now it hits at pi over 2, and then goes pi units to get to 3 pi over 2, and then goes pi units to get to the spot behind it, past there, the 2 pi, plus pi over 2, is 5 pi over 2, etc., etc. So we start at pi over 2, plus n pi again, because that's we add pi each time, where n is an element of the integers. The y-intercept is at 0, 1. So the y-intercept for the cosine is 1, the y-intercept for the sine is 0. 
One last thing before we move from this page. Um, these graphs have symmetry. Oops. Symmetry. WRT means res with respect to. This graph has symmetry. With respect to. Now there's choices. There's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, and there is the origin. To better see which is which for these, it's better to go back to the calculator. Um, which graph is this? Can you tell me before I say it? This is the sine. Starts at zero, goes up to one, back down. That's the sine curve from zero to two pi. Does it have x uh, symmetry with respect to the x-axis? No, there'd have to be a point down here. Symmetry with respect to the y-axis? No, there'd have to be a point here. How about with respect to the origin? Let's pick a point here. You go through the origin, same distance away, and yes, there's a point. You can do that to any point. Go through the origin. It becomes like a pinwheel, sort of. So the sine curve has symmetry with respect to the origin. What does the cosine curve have symmetry with respect to, or does it even? It doesn't have to. Let's go back to y equals, go over and turn off the sine, turn on the cosine, and then look at the graph. Cosine starts at 0, 1, goes down to 0, it looks like that serial bowl. So, is there symmetry with respect to the x? If there were, then there'd have to be a point up here. Symmetry with respect to the origin? There'd have to be a point over here. But, with respect to the y-axis, every point on the right has a mirror image. You now go perpendicular through that y-axis same distance away and you hit it. So this has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Uh, we'll talk later about what that means. Uh, we can mention it here I guess. Symmetry, symmetry with respect to the origin is an odd function. Symmetry with respect to the y-axis is an even function. But let's not worry about that right now. That will be later. So now the question becomes, what happens when you do things, I guess, to these graphs? And section 4.2 then starts to talk about, what about y equals 2 sine theta, or sine x? Um, y equals one half sine x. Y equals sine two x. That's the whole argument there. Y equals sine one half x. These are going to move things around while well, stretch things. When you multiply, you're somehow doing a stretch or perhaps a squeeze. When you multiply on the outside, it will behave vertically. If you multiply on the inside, it will behave horizontally. Outside does exactly what you think. Two times that doubles the height because it works vertically. One half times the sine takes half the height. Inside works the opposite. Doubling the x makes it half, sort of a squeeze horizontally, like an accordion. And the one half x is a stretch horizontally. The best way to look at these is with your calculator. So we're doing sine. So since the sine is the first here, first of all, we'll go and turn this on. And then let's do sine. 
I'm sorry, two sine x. So this is outside, and let's do one half. I'm going to use 0.5. A little easier to enter sine x. So now let's graph these. So this is the normal sine x. When you do two sine x, what does it do? It doubles the height. Now it goes up to two, down to a negative two. One half takes half that height, goes up to one half, down to negative one half. Does that make sense? Let's take a look at the cosine. Two cosine x and one half cosine x and cosine two x and cosine one half x. I guess we didn't do the last two for the sine. Oh my gosh! Let's do those first: the sine two x cosine or, and sine one half x. But this is outside with two and one half. But we didn't do inside. So let's go back to and clear this out. Now we want sine 2x and sine 1 half x. Now let's graph these. This is the normal. When you do a 2x, it's done a squeeze. It's taken that, squeezed it down to half its size. When you do one half x, it's done a stretch. It stretched it to twice its size. And we'll look at the period and notice that that has things to do with this. If the period is 2 pi, what does the 2x do? It moves it down to saying there's two of those in the normal 2 pi. Um, if it's one half x, then it's only half in the normal 2 pi. So there's several ways to look at that. But every time you do this, it doesn't matter which function you look at. We can leave these alone and just press cosine, cosine, cosine. And what do you get? Well, you get the normal cosine curve. You get doubled it, which means there's now two of these periods in the same spot. You can take half x and you get half that in the same region. Same thing works with the twos. If this is cosine x and this is two cosine x. And this is one half cosine x. You'll still get, here's the normal cosine. Next one will be twice, going up two, down two, instead of up one, down one, and half, going up one half, down one half. What do you do if there's a negative sign in there? Well, if the negative is outside, outside the function, and the function is sine, and inside is really this parenthesis for the argument, x in this case, outside the function, it works vertically. And what a negative does is flips it. So if initially the graph was something like this, let me, <laughs> that was horrible. But anyway, let me change colors. It would flip over and go down instead of up and then up instead of down. So it just flips it vertically. For inside the function, it flips it horizontally. So I need some distance here horizontally. Start with the green. 
So if this was the initial graph, then, let me change colors. It would be flipped over the y-axis and do something like this. Horizontally, looks sort of like a mustache. But remember, um, these things when they flip, this red goes on forever, the green goes on forever. So it's always nice to use our calculator to help us remember that the graph doesn't end where we show it to end. Let's turn this on, get back to y equals. Uh, there's cosine and clear. this will be say a negative cosine x and this will be cosine of a negative x. Now make sure you use the negation. That's a little higher, not, not as long. And close the parentheses. Let's make our window go from, um, let's say, negative 20 to 20, just so. And we can also draw these differently. Right now, the first one uses a line. If we go over to that side and start pressing Enter, it changes the different styles. So this one can be a thicker line for the negative cosine x. And if we draw this, let's see, they do the shading above and shading below, but we'll draw it with a circle so we can see where it's being drawn. So now let's graph this. There is the normal one. This is when it's flipped over. And this is when it's flipped horizontally. Notice it's going back over the original. Does that make sense? Well, remember, this is the cosine that has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So if you flip it over to the other side, you're going to get the same picture. Let's use sine and take a look at that. The sine here, press sine for this and the sine for this. And now when we do this, I'm going to make the window not so, um, not so tall, I guess. A negative two to two. Okay, so this is the original sine function. This is negative sine, so that one still flips it through the x-axis, and then it flips it through the y-axis, which notice in this case that it goes over the one that flips it through the x-axis, the negative sign. So that's sort of interesting sine x, sine negative x and negative sine x are sort of the, the same picture. <laughs> yeah, sine x and negative. I just said that wrong. Sine x and sine negative x. Yeah. Anyway, interesting ideas there. We need to do some examples. That was part of it in there. Most of these examples are graphing um, combinations of this. So on page 149, and this should be the correct page now, I've got the correct edition of the book. Um, number 40, now the directions say each function over a two period interval give the period and amplitude. But I'm not going to request you to do that on the test. I'm going to have it a little different. So I just want one period, but I want to see it in sort of in a picture so you can put it on the calculator if, to check it. So we have y equals a negative pi cosine pi x. So let's see. 
how it can graph this, make it nice and big. Okay, so what we need to do is recognize the negative means it's going to be flipped over. The cosine means it's going to be flipped over here. It usually goes from 0 to 2 pi. Oops, move that back up. But now in 2 pi units, it'll be 3 copies of that. Uh, 2 pi divided by 3 is really 2 pi over 3. Add another 2 pi, you get 4 pi over 3. And then add another 2 pi, you get 6 pi over 3. Won't go any higher than 1 or any lower than a negative 1 because, I'm sorry, it's going higher and lower because it's multiplied by pi. So this is now pi units instead of 1. <coughs> and negative pi units instead of negative 1. So if we change, well, let's draw this in first. So if this is going to be broken in half and then fourths, we're going to do it sort of like this. Have to be another one here and another one here. All we really need is one of these because that's what I want you to do on a test. It's really just graph this first one and it's new in this case reduced so this goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3 and from negative pi to pi now to check that and you can check all of these if you do it this way what you want is y equals clear out all this other stuff and put in the negative pi cosine pi x, the original problem. But make your screen, your window, fit this window. It goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3. Um, the steps, since these would be nice to show those little marks, but it's really one fourth of 2 pi over 3, uh, which is 2 pi over 12, which was pi over 6. So I'm going to put that in, but this is not real. It's essential to get this exactly right. And then it goes from a negative pi to a positive pi. And you can count by ones there, that's fine. When you graph this then, all you should see is an upside down. Oh, I didn't put it upside down. Oh, lose some points on that. But this is why you check it. Notice it all fits in this one window. From a negative pi to pi, from 0 to 2 pi over 3, and then you got to flip it over. So maybe I can go back here, get rid of this for a second get my pin back and say since you're supposed to flip it over because of this the final answer is upside down cereal bowl so that's how you should do these problems when they say two periods you can just do one period in fact that's I'd like you to do that to check because that's how I'll do it on the test should be able to do those problems from 4.1 on the chapter test now. Thanks.